Christmas time, uh, seeking ways to, to assist and help the different organizations that, that reach out to help people who are in need. So God, this morning, as we stand and sing your name, may we just be a blessing back to your ears as our hearts, our voices, and our minds are focused on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and sing a little bit. We got a quick video. Oh, already dead. All right, we'll just do Oh.
have a seat. Tony, could you put up uh, the announcement about the, the one I texted you this morning just so I could cut it? I couldn't get it on. Okay. Oh, wait. Yeah, I can. Hang on. Uh-oh. So, kids, why don't you come up, okay? Other kids, I don't have a bulletin to even read from. I'm in trouble. Kurt, is Helen here? Is she downstairs? Dads in here that are, are, are ready to put like full length curtain walls and stuff on these little girls when they get into their teens. Look how beautiful all they are. Those are so <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's pray. It's so plain. <laughs> Father, we uh, just thank you, God, for all the blessings in our life, especially our children. And Lord, we pray that. Through us, they would see, uh, as this morning as we were praying, Chris just had such a good uh, message for a call from our heart that God, in our kids' eyes, they would look at us and see hope, they would see peace, and they would see love. Uh, in a world sometimes it seems very chaotic, and, and our, you know, our country's history is packed with this, God, but may they see peace through us and a hope that comes from you. So as they go downstairs, Father, bless the teachers, bless their time together. May they continue to learn more and more about who Jesus Christ is in our hope in you. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. Stand up and say hi to the people, okay? Hi. Hi.
misses it. I'm going to pass this around. If you can get the money to us now, great. If you can't, please sign up. They are $18 for small children's to extra large, $20 for 2X, 3X, or if you want a V-neck. Because I know some women hate crew neck. They are gray, and they say miracles for Memphis. Every dime is going to the flight. So just if you can't do this, just keep praying because those prayers are working. <laughs> For those of you who are thinking, what's 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 not? We're not talking about Memphis back in Tennessee, okay? We're talking about a young little girl, that granddaughter, and, and that's that's daddy right there. Um, anyway, this young girl born, and from the moment she was born, she's been in the ICU, fights for her life. And we've had pictures of her up here. Tony's always put good pictures up there. Early on, you could hardly even see her face because of all the tubes. All the things that were, she was on life support. Uh, this young girl has been battling like crazy. Uh, last Saturday, we had a great work party uh, over at Bruce's house and, and uh, did a lot of work outside and, and a little bit inside. Uh, but again, the life flight to come up here to Spokane uh, is a costly endeavor. And I don't know if you caught what you just said. It went down almost $13,000. So the raising of money went from $33,000 now down to $20,000 still in need. Uh, so, your t shirt. That, remember Jackson? Remember the Jackson yeah. t-shirt? This this little body, man, raised up big time. And uh, I'm always so proud and so amazed at how this church family raises up. And so this is another opportunity uh, for us to do that. Uh, so grab a t-shirt. Um, where's Joanne on the, on the ladder? Did it already go by? Uh, anyway, it was really good last week to, to, to be there at the bless them and have so much fun, okay? All right, let's stand back up and sing some more, okay?
you this morning, God. We thank you, Lord, that you lead us to the place that you want us to be, God. Glorifying you, Lord. Glorifying you to what you call me to do. Lord, we just thank you, God, that you created us to glorify you, God. And Lord, we lift you up this morning, God, as that blessed assurance, God, that you gave us 2,000 years ago when you died on the cross, Lord. So we sing to you. We lift up your name, God, in this short time we have together, giving you all the glory and praise for all that you've done. Hey! Yeah.
uh, examining Fred and looking at things. It might be a week after the point of tomorrow. God, I pray that you reveal what's going on and give them a, a very particular plan of action to attack this. Again, cover this family up with your peace, God. This family that is such an encouragement and a blessing to so many of us. Watch over them and strengthen them. We continue to lift up Memphis to you and their family. Thank you so much for last week's work party. Uh, doing some things, getting some things done and having fun together with it. I pray, God, that you continue to strengthen this beautiful little family up. Cannot wait for them all to be here at the same time. But we lift up Memphis to you for her strength that she's continuing to get better and better each and every day. And that, Father, through your hand, uh, the funds would be uh, obtained to provide that flight uh, from Texas up here to Spokane and, and eventually go into Lewis. God, for this offering, I pray that you would bless us, help us to be uh, uh, cheerful givers, and that we would uh, be held accountable to provide good works to this community because of what you provide to us. In Jesus' name, amen. That's an ugly, ugly image right there, is it? Let me do this for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be bad. Get that other, would you put that, uh, those lyrics up there for me? Yeah, that, that, I always get a kick out of how God orchestrates things. Okay? Downstairs, the kids are done with the uh, uh, Dr. Seuss books, but I'm not. <laughs> I've had way too much fun with this. And, and today is All the Places You'll Go. And one of the songs is God lead me to the place I need to be, which nine times out of ten is not where we would really like to go. But when we trust him, it's incredible what we discover in our relationship with him, but also the relationship with others. All the places that we will go. Lead me, God, so that the place that I need to be in order to strengthen my faith, in order to get closer to you in order to find myself deeper in your word and trusting you more, in order to be on my knees more often and praying. This morning at 9.30, every, every Sunday morning, if you're interested, right in there we have prayer at 9.30. Uh, an opportunity to lift up special things, lift up our country, lift up our church family, um, the world, anything that's on people's minds is a chance for us to be on our knees and pray. So I pray God leads us to a place he needs us to be today, at this moment. Okay? So that we are changed, we are altered, we are um, brought more and more in line with him. So here's, here's one of Dr. Seuss's books, one, one of my favorites. All the places you'll go. I'm not going to read all of them. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer, your, steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know. And you are the guy who decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not-so-good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out there, things can happen, and frequently do, to, brainy, to people as brainy and footsy as you. And then things start to happen. Don't worry. Don't stew. Just go right along. You'll start happening too. Oh, the places you'll go. Theodore Seuss Geisel wrote that book when he was battling cancer. It was the last book he wrote. He died a year after this book was published um, and immediately became a bestseller. This man who was battling cancer. Look at the kind of book that he wrote about giving other people encouragement, not just kids, I'm going to encourage you to read this book. This is a great book. And, and just like last week when we were looking at um, the things that, like, that um, the, I just forgot their names, the yooks and the zooks, finding ways in which our, do we have walls in our life, be, in, you know, within our families, do we have walls in our heart between us and God? God's timing is great. There's such depth of, of spiritual kind of teachings as well as social teachings. This one is another one of those. Oh, the places that you will go. While he wrote it as an allegorical kind of analogy of work or of life, his book to us is that last parting gift that he wanted to give to us. When I left, uh, when Jennifer and I came to Lewiston 27 years ago from Portland, the people there gave me this book as a send-off gift. All oh, the places you will go. And I think about that because we had no idea what was coming our way. Although Bill Hain was kicking and screaming about moving back to Lewiston, Idaho. Me? I don't want to go back there. Jennifer, come on. 
Let's go to Montana. Let's go anywhere else but Lewiston, Idaho. I had no idea what was in store for us. None whatsoever. Would there be hazards? Absolutely, there became hazards. <laughs> was there hurt? Yes, there was, unfortunately. Was there hardship? Sure there was. But there was also help. There was also healing. And another H word, and that is that brought out the words of hallelujah to who our God is. Had I gotten my way and gone a different direction as I looked at the, uh, the down the streets, seeing uh, Lewis and Idaho, I don't think so. I'd rather go over that direction. Rather than look over there, I would have missed you all. Yes. Jennifer and I would not have been blessed by the, t the last eight years here. We would not have had the relationships that we've had. Would not have had the opportunity to marry good-looking people like yourself. Not marry you, but conduct the services, okay? <laughs> would not have been able to be an Orfino for two beautiful years in which Jennifer, uh, God healed us through some incredible people. Would not have had the opportunity to serve at Warner or at New Bridges. Would not have had the opportunity to be teaching and impacting and working with kids who are going to become teachers. Would not have been blessed like that. <clears throat> All the places that we would go. I'm glad I didn't get my way. Glad I went to the places, to the place I needed to be in order for my faith, my relationship with Christ, my faith and my relationship with, G, with uh, Jennifer and my children so that it would be saved, strengthened, and brought home in a very powerful way. We don't know what's going to come our way, but all the places that we will go when we are followers of Christ, that's what a disciple does, is follows Christ, not ourselves. How many of you this morning, the self in you said, you know what, I think I'll sleep through. Nobody will miss me. I thought that. Okay. <laughs> How many of you think that sometimes, I don't need to get there a little bit early to visit and talk with people. It's okay if I come in late. How many of you think, I don't really want to join prayer. It's not that big a deal. In the middle of that is the selfish voice that God wants us to get rid of. Because he wants to take us to the places we need to be. I want you to turn to Luke chapter 6 in your Bibles. This is a tough teaching about being a disciple of Christ. This is a very difficult one. Okay? But it is at the very heart of who Jesus is and what he calls us to do and to be. And we're going to start in verse 27. Right on the heels of the, uh, the Beatitudes. Okay? Blessed are all those kind of things that are out there. Then he comes into this. Verse 27. But I say to you who hear. And that's an important statement. Right now you have the choice to hear or not. You can be thinking about other things or listening to God and His Word. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Whoever hits you on the cheek, offer him the other also. And whoever takes away your coat, do not withhold your shirt from him either. Give to everyone who asks of you, and whoever takes away what is yours, do not demand it back. Whoa. This is a difficult teaching. And just as you want people to treat you, treat them in the same way. That is the golden rule, isn't it? Treat others as you would like them to treat you. And if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners in order to receive back the same amount. But love your enemies twice in a very brief time. He is saying the same thing, to love your enemies and do good and lend, expect, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be the sons of the Most High. For he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. And do not judge, and you will not be judged. And do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Pardon, and you will be pardoned. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. They will pour into your lap, for by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. Whew. Some difficult teachings right there. To love our Neighbor as ourself is an easy one, isn't it? You have good neighbors, it's easy to love them. Anybody have any bad neighbors? Okay. Are you the bad neighbor? 
loving our neighbor as ourself is, is a teaching that I can latch on to, that most Christians can say, yeah, I'm into that one. But this is a harder teaching to love those who persecute you, to love those who are considered enemies, who go against what we stand for. Discipleship is hard because he takes us when we follow into the places that we need to be. Learning to follow Jesus as a disciple, too, is not so much about what we give up. Okay? We do give up things, I understand that. But it's more so about taking on the things of God in our life. Becoming more merciful, becoming more patient, becoming more loving, becoming more gracious. That is all, it usually goes against our brain, our sin nature. But the more we take on God, the more we are able to have a heart that really loves and seeks to lift up others instead of ourselves. It's about setting out on a journey with our God. Allowing Him to take us to the places He wants us to go. And so here we are at the very beginning of another day. I don't know about you, but did you ever think that when you were younger, and by younger I'm talking about in our, um, just after we get into double digits in our life. Thinking about, I can't wait till I get older. 15, 16, 17, 18. I can't wait till I get it older. Maybe I'll have it all figured out. Maybe life will make more sense when I get to be older. <laughs> and then we arrive at that point when we think we should know it, but man, there's still more questions. More and more questions, more and more confusion, which confirms to me that life is a continual learning process. If we're willing to learn. If we're willing to receive others in a way that we can learn from them, regardless of of how we disagree or agree. We will never have all the answers. Each day is a new opportunity. When you woke up this morning, before you became an opportunity and a journey to make choices, new choices, choices to align yourself with Christ. Take another step on becoming, becoming a better and stronger follower of Jesus Christ. To learn about ourselves and others. Last week when we were talking about the yooks and the zooks, they were busy talking, busy talking about what they knew and how they were right. And what they missed in that is the ability to listen and hear and understand others. That's so important in our life is that we take the time to listen more. I said this last week and I probably said it a million times, not just to myself but to others. And that is God gave us only one of these for a reason. And he gave us two of these for an important reason. To listen to one another. To hear each other. Today is another opportunity to make some decisions, choices about which street to go down. To where we can learn how to rely on. Learn how to trust. And have faith in a God who loves us and wants everything in our life to be directed back towards him. It's a day of discovery. When you woke up this morning, you came to church, were you ready to discover anything? Were you thinking, what am I here to discover today? Or am I just putting in some time? It's up to you. It's not up to me. It's up to you. When you walk into this place, are you ready to discover more about your faith? Ready to discover more about what it is God said? Many of you came to church thinking, I don't think I want to... You weren't ready to hear love your neighbor or your, your enemies. Most of us don't want to come to church and hear that. But a disciple loves well, even when they are facing those who are against them. Journeys of life bring all kinds of adventures. I can, I'm going to give you three examples. First of all is the story of Abram that we read about in Genesis. God calls Abram to leave his country. To take his family and travel to a place that he had no idea where they were going. To trust that God would take him there and tell him when to stop. They had no idea. But he did have brains in his head and feet in his shoes, didn't he? Just like you and I do. Are we willing to follow God to find out where it is he's going to take us. He had faith in his heart that God would guide him. I know that Fred and Joanne have a faith in God that he will guide them in whatever's in front of them, whatever's coming their way. And as a church family that loves them, we get to have feet in our shoes and hands and hearts to work and come alongside whoever that might be. Same thing with Memphis. Opportunities to bless and to strengthen one another. We trust God in the middle of all this. The great thing about this is that Abram, as he followed what God asked him to do, promised uh, incredible things to Abram, and they came true. 
It wasn't an easy journey either. When we read in scripture, it just sounds like kind of like, oh, Abraham and his family just kind of wandered along. They wandered down along, walking on the levees, having a good time. It was not an easy journey. It was old, childless, wondering probably at every, maybe every turn, okay, God, are we almost there? Are we almost there? He had to wait and wait and wait for a child to be born. There were conflicts in his family. Don't think you're the only family that has conflicts with your children or with each other. Because it's all through scripture. Why? Because we are made of flesh. Through it all, God blessed Abram with a new name, Abraham. And with children manyfold and a new home. Naomi we read about in scripture as well in the Old Testament. Naomi married and left her home country to live with her husband. Then her husband and her sons died. And she actually asked God and changed her name to something that meant bitterness. Because she had a hard and bitter heart. She had reached, as Dr. Seuss would say, an unpleasant bump in a life. A slump. And unslumping is tough. Unslumping herself was not easy. <laughs> I said this last week. that You know how many times I say these words over and over because I don't want to mess up. Unslumping. But she persevered and returned to her homeland. One of her daughters-in-law named Ruth went with her. Wherever you will go, I will go. Wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. When Naomi returned home, her family had accepted all of them and they began a new life there. Born to Ruth was a son that Naomi took care of and raised up. In fact, the community said it was her son that son, that young man's name was Obed, who was the grandfather of David, King David. Tell me, God's timing is not the best. He has only our future and our moment together always in his mind. Even Jesus Christ, I want you to hear this real quick. We think about our Savior, Jesus Christ. His journey began when he was conceived out of wedlock. Out of wedlock. Think about, bless you, those are some good sneezes going on. <laughs> Think about how in society today, how religious people would act towards a child out of wedlock. A, a, little, a, a teenage girl giving birth to a child out of wedlock. Religious circles would probably shun her. I would hope that Christian circles, which is different than religion, would open arms and welcome that little one in. Not only was he conceived out of wedlock, but they were, he was born into a non-affluent family, somebody that everybody kind of looked down their noses at. How can anything good come from this place, this family? And here's the last one. They became refugees shortly after his birth. That's some serious recipes that strikes almost against them. Especially from a society that looks at refugees in a way that says, we don't want them here. Who's in the middle of those refugees? In this case, it was Christ. Please think of that when we're thinking about what's going on in our country. When he begins his journey to share God's message of love and wholeness and human within humanity, there were times of incredible joy. Right before they began to say, crucify him, they're all praising him, singing hallelujah. All kinds of things about who Jesus is that he rides in on a donkey. And it's only a couple days later that they are yelling, crucify him. He had moments of incredible, as, he, as Dr. Seuss says, when boom bands were playing. But he also had those moments in which the lonely games that he walked in led to his crucifixion. Then Jesus tells his disciples to go someplace, doesn't he? He tells them to go into all the world and make disciples. Go into all the world and teach about Jesus. And I'm going to add this, and occasionally use words. We teach about Jesus with our very actions. We teach about Jesus, obviously, with our words, surely trying to repeat these things and live them out. But we also teach about Jesus or who Jesus is not by how we talk to one another. This morning, when Chris, uh, and during our prayer time, when Chris said, let, let the kids today. And again, I've got uh, uh, teachers all over the valley who are sharing with me that there's been an uptick in name calling and bullying in our elementary schools particularly kids who are minorities, are being bullied and name-called. And I say this word, I hate using it, but people will be called niggers, 
jungle bunnies. Girls are being called sluts. I say that to remind us that who are they looking at? They're watching TV and they're listening to people at home. We have to be different. We have to be different. The prayer that she said that was just such a good timing of the prayer. That's why I invite you to come, man. It's so good to be in there praying. But that prayer touched me deeply. That those kids who line up right here, those kids who we're around, they look at us and are we speaking Jesus without even saying a word and also how we say things. Do they see hope? Do they hear hope with us? I hope so. I hope that's what uh, my kids see in me. I hope that's what my grandchildren see in me. I hope that that's what the students who are at the college see from me is something different. Not because I'm special, but because of who Christ is in me. All the places that he will take me. I am grateful that I have an opportunity to work with young people who are going to become teachers. Blessed beyond measure. Dr. Seuss described the landscape of life as some neatly arranged and ordered places. Some wide open places, some crossroads, some wonderful places, some dangerous, slumpy, waiting and threatening places. That's all of life. We stand in awe sometimes and we give great thanks and praise for the ordered and wonderful places. Those are easy to be in. We can be excited about the adventures of wide open places. But when it comes to the crossroads, where there's some danger, where there's a possibility of slumping, where there's a threat, we have to look up and down the streets and look over them with care about how we are choosing to live our life, how we are choosing to allow God to work through us to love others better, to bring light to a world that gets darkened very quickly. So I'm going to ask you now to choose, or to choose, to turn to Ephesians chapter 5, about this walk that we're on, this journey that we're involved with. Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to see the very essence of what we're called and how we're called to walk. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2, and then we're going to skip down to 14. Ephesians chapter 5, here's the statement. I don't know what your subtitle says, but it says, Be imitators of God. Be imitators of God and how we live our life. Verses 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. If you don't have those underlined, you should. I would encourage you to underline this particular passage. This is at the essence of what we are called to do and how we're called to live our life. To be imitators of God. To walk in love, just as Christ also loved you. I think as Christians sometimes we forget that he loved us first. And he continues to love us. Aren't you amazed that over all of these eons and generations and generations of people, God hasn't just said, I quit. You guys don't get it. What's wrong with us at times? Because we don't get it. I don't get it. As, as human beings, he understands. I'm so glad he's God and I'm not. Because as human beings, we have a, a, a very low threshold of tolerance of one another. I'm just glad God is a patient and forgiving God for us. I'm going to skip down to 14. In between uh, verse two or 3 until we get up to 14, he is talking about the streets and the choices that we will make. That if we truly walk with God, we're going to be careful how we live, how we walk, and the choices that we make. And in verse 14, for this reason, all the reasons that we just read about, for this reason, it says, awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. How many of you sleepwalk? Think, uh, you don't have to raise your hand. If you, anybody ever sleepwalk? Think about it. Sleepwalking is what he's telling us sometimes we do through our journey of faith. We fall asleep with how we're developing, or, and we don't develop. We don't get stronger in our roots into him. And so we end up just kind of sleepwalking, blindly moving through life. He says to wake up, sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Therefore, be careful how you walk. Not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. So then, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And, do, and what is the will of the Lord? That we would walk as he walked, to walk in love. That is his will. 
And do not get drunk on with wine, for that is dissipation. But be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all the things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. And be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. I'm reading a book right now that my division chair gave to me. It's called Lead for God's Sake. Lead for God's sake. You and I are called to be leaders in a world that's dark. And we lead not for ourselves, but we lead for God's sake. So that other people see something different in us. That we are gracious with our tongue. That we are soft. I'm not talking about weakness here. I'm talking about soft with how we interact with one another. That we seek to use these two items rather than this one so much. So that we listen and hear things. We seek to understand be purposeful how you walk, to walk in love. When we walk with someone, it kind of kind of looks like this. Ruby, I'm going to ask you to come up here. Okay? I'm going to go for a walk with Ruby. Okay? When we walk, if we're really truly intentional about walking with someone, we're either walking side by side like this, maybe we're walking like this, maybe we're holding hands as we walk, this is walking with someone. But is this walking with someone? I want you to go the other direction. Okay, go ahead. Is this, wait, we're going this way. No, we're going to go this way. And then she takes off. It's better down that way. Then she walks and moves on. And I say, no, I'm not going to go that way. Can I hear her back there? Can't hear her. I can't hear her. She cannot impact my heart. So when we walk with God, when we walk with God, understand that we're walking hand in hand. And when we walk with someone, as I walk with Ruby, we're down on, or anybody, and we're walking down on the levees, and we're just strolling together. It's one thing I liked about golf, before everybody used carts. But when you, go, when you golf, you're out there for four hours sometimes. And you hit the ball once in a while, and you're talking. You're talking. If you hit the ball well, you're talking well. If you don't hit the ball well, you might hear other things. I got to know my dad really well by golfing by spending that kind of time with him. Because we learn about one another. We talk to one another. We hear and listen to what each other's going, what is going on in each other's life. If we go in a different direction from where God is asking us to walk, he will not be able to impact us. We will not have a heart that's ready to receive all that he wants to teach us. And we cannot enjoy how incredible his love is, how awesome his word of God is. When we walk with the Lord, we align ourselves with His will. And what is His will in our life? To walk in light. To walk in the light of life. To walk in love. When you're constantly walking with someone, when you're constantly seeking out their voice, you come to know them better. James 1, and you don't have to go there right now, you can't read it another time, but James 1 tells us to be doers of the word. Not merely listeners to the word and then leaving and forgetting all about what we just heard. Each of us today in about 15 minutes have the opportunity to leave this place and forget about everything that we heard. Or to become doers of the word. And by being doers of the word we're going to investigate it more and more and more. And learn to pray and ask God's insights in all these things. John uh, chapter 8 tells us this. Jesus is teaching, and he says to him once again, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life in them. That when we walk with him, and we are uh, allowing the Holy Spirit and his word to impact our life, we have no choice. It's harder and harder to resist because we fall madly in love with him, and we walk as he would have us walk. To live well, to love well. Dr. Seuss and our God had a faith in humanity and that it would not give up, but it would persevere. Dr. Seuss believed that humanity would persevere. Through the, through, though the weather be foul, though your enemies prowl, faith that we would hide far and face your problems, whatever they are, no matter how discouraged we might feel in life or about life, about our faith, about the state of our world and our country. Remember that God has faith in us. God has faith in you. God has faith in you to go out into the world and to impact it by how well you love others. By how well people see that you are different. 
All we need is the faith as small as a mustard seed. And we can move mountains. And sometimes those mountains are a hardened heart. Sometimes those mountains are the need to forgive someone else. Sometimes that mountain is something that's causing us to miss certain things in our godly walk. And when we do so, when we have those kind of faith moments of, that would move a mountain, through God's wisdom we are able to create a world that's more filled with peace, justice, love, and mercy. Remember the very first statement, or the first command of God as a disciple, to love your enemies. Love your enemies. That's a tough teaching. I'm going to have one last piece of scripture and then we'll close. This is, comes from 1 John chapter 2. Verses 5 and 6. Whoever keeps his word, in him the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. The one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. This week, each day, we wake up with an opportunity to choose, to choose how we live, to choose how we speak, to choose how we interact with other people who truly disagree with us, who truly have a, a, a vendetta against us in some cases, but to truly love one another. Not just those who agree, that's easy, but to love our enemies well. The book, Oh, The Places You Will Go, is a mountain of wisdom, it says. Even though he wrote this at the end of his life, he was still teaching. He was still loving. He was still persevering. At every stage of our life, we have the choice. This afternoon, as we leave here, we can continue to be doers of the Word of God, effectual doers of the Word of God, or we choose to let go of whatever it is we heard. I can't mean me today. Anybody who calls on Christ, we are called to be doers of His Word, to impact the world in a very, very strong way. Find a way to do that this week. Find a way to demonstrate, because not because you are uh, wanting everybody to look at you, but to interact with somebody else that demonstrates God's love. Take the time to listen to someone this week. Take the time, take the time to hear someone who thinks differently than you do, so that they see something different in you because of who Christ is. Amen? Let's pray. Father, well, we are grateful for your word. Grateful for the opportunity to give us to come together each Sunday and worship and fellowship together. Have the, the chance to open up your word and the freedom to still open up your word in this country. I pray, God, that you would bless every person here, their families. And this week as we move closer and closer towards Thanksgiving, that, God, you would watch over those who are traveling. Help them to arrive safely and to enjoy a day or two of just incredible fellowship with family and friends. And again, God, may we be people who think about those who don't have. Find ways to serve others. Find ways to think about others and to pray for those who don't have. Father, I ask that again that you would help me during this week to do the same thing. In the midst of the preparing and getting excited about different things, and that, uh, Father, we would turn off the television. That we would turn off our cell phones. And that we would sit around the table or sit around the living room and truly, truly talk to one another and to hear each other and enjoy such rich, rich fellowship that comes with such activity. God, may you be glorified because of how we live our life and how we choose the streets that we walk in. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Have a really great thing. I've had some people ask this question, uh, and that is, are we doing the bowling thing this year? Uh, and I'm going to tell you, we're not. Only because I, haven't, I, I don't have the time to put it together with what we're doing at school and what's going on in my plan. I just haven't even had a chance to think about it. Uh, so we're going to miss it this year. But this is what I do think we can do. If, if I can grab on to two or three people to help me, uh, maybe we can do it for Easter. What, a, what an interesting time to bless families at Easter with the same kind of things that we did before. So if you're interested in helping me with that, then that's great. But it, it involves so many, so many things that I just don't have the time to do that this time around. So we don't have the bowling uh, episode this year but maybe we can do it for Easter, okay? God bless you, have a really great day.